We bring you greetings in Jesus' name. We are in a season that calls for sober reflection in the light of the passing of our beloved sister, Osina Chinguachuku, who is a kingdom asset and a generational asset to this generation. In the light of so much misinformation, in the light of so much misconstruction of events, I decided to set straight what I know concerning the situation. Over two and a half months to three months ago, she came to see me with her husband with complaints of chest pain, respiratory distress. I prayed for her and prayed and prayed again. And when the symptoms did not abate, I counseled that they go to the hospital to help us to know exactly what we were dealing with. And they asked if I could assist, help them facilitate that process. I called our head of medical team, Dr. Sang, who is consultant pediatrician with the Federal Medical Center, Kefi, to assist handle their situation. And he called the Federal Medical Center, Jabi, called colleagues there where they attended to them. On seeing her, they ordered some investigations after examination, and that included CT scan, computerized axial tomography scan. That was done, and from what the doctors saw, they felt that there was need for further investigation, either at the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital or the National Hospital in Abuja. I called the doctor, consultant, pulmonologist, respiratory physician, at the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital, Dr. Akko Alexander told him the situation and he asked that they come to see him immediately. And they went to the Guagualada Teaching Hospital. After they had examined her there and saw the situation, they felt that there was a need for histology and biopsy of the lung tissue. And they, re and they asked that she go to the National Hospital to get that done. I again called the Dr. Jibrin, who is head of pathology and consultant histopathologist of the National Hospital in Abuja and reported the issue to him and to help us go ahead with the investigations and find out what exactly happened. I am calling names and calling places because the people are available are alive and they are all verifiable. And then they continued the management. Um, the histology was done from what I saw at that time. The picture was much milder than what the CT scan earlier on showed. And so we felt very happy that at least there was relief. She called me daily, and we, literally daily, and prayed with her. She reported progress. The point came where she needed no oxygen anymore, uh, according to what she said to me one night and that they checked her oxygen perfusion and it was 100 percent and we were very very excited at that progress that was the point it was before we went over to the crusade in cameroon it was at in cameroon the second night that i got to know of the unfortunate incidents of her passing now if there was domestic violence that led to or coincided with those symptoms that she came with two and a half months, two and a half months to three months ago, there is no way I would know. And if there had been perennial domestic violence, there was no way I would have known. The things we're hearing after her passing were things that were very, very strange to my hearing. Then I began to ask questions. First, I asked the twin sister, are you aware that your sister, were you aware that your sister passed through all these things? She said yes, she knew some of them, but that the majority of them, she was hearing also from those she confided in. I asked her, I said, if you knew, why didn't you let us know? And the twin sister said, she always begged her, please don't let the church know, don't tell the pastor, please, 
the man will change please um uh, just 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 pray for us the man will change and that continued to happen i asked the first son yesterday i said was this real and the son told other stories and i said so why didn't you tell me because typically they will run to me after service and i'll pray for them lay hands on them why didn't you tell me about what was going on in the home and the young man said they couldn't tell me because the father would always ask them after they left me and said what did you tell the pastor did you tell him anything and so on and so forth i further other members in the choir who were privy to this some of the things that were going on i asked one of them when we paid the visit to the house of the disease yesterday what happened why were we not aware of all these things the same story that she would always go on her knees and ask them please don't don't just pray don't but trusting god for him to change the last one that taught me so much was the music producer who came to see me in the office two days ago to tell me his own experience how he witnessed that the man slapped the wife in his music studio and i said to him you saw a man slap a woman in your presence and you left the man alone and you are a man yourself and he said before he could respond to the to the man the woman again in tears on her knees begged him not to do anything to leave him alone and not even to do anything at all and so on and so forth so we have had these stories and this is all the things that we got to know after she had passed as a person and as a church everyone who knows us know that we have zero degree tolerance for domestic abuse and wife battery of any sort if you ever listen to any of our relationship messages, there is a principle, a policy, and a rule we have. And that is, it is better to be alive without a marriage than to die because of marriage. We've said that over and over and over. I am sure that some of us would have listened to the clips of those messages. Now, this kind of time is a time where people heap all manner of blames on the church. And that is typical because whatever goes wrong, any time it is the first point of call is the church. I have seen people ask questions. Why should a wife abuser be a, a member of a church? Or how can somebody be so brutal and, uh, and is, and is a, a member of the church? That is not a question that you should that people who know scripture should ask. You know the ark of Noah, the same ark that carried good animals, also had evil beasts inside the same ark. You know Jesus Christ had the followership of what the Bible called the multitude. And for me, multitude means multiple attitudes. People with multiple inclinations. People with multiple tendencies. People with multiple behaviors. In fact, one of those that followed Jesus Christ who was a thief who also sold him to death. He was called Judas Iscariot. Question is, how could somebody follow Jesus Christ as perfect as Jesus was, as instructive as he was, as impactful as he was, and still be a thief and a murderer? That question is left for everybody to answer. And I can tell you the words of it all. There was a man, a personality called Lucifer, who was already was in heaven and became Satan, the devil, in the under the nose of God in heaven. A place where there was no sin and could have been no sin at all. This guy became the inventor and originator of sin. How is it possible for somebody to become a devil from being an archangel right inside heaven? That is how possible it is for anybody to be anything while inside the church. Even the best of pastors or preachers or teachers in the world cannot change any man or woman who is unwilling to be changed. In case you feel frustrated at anything and you are airing your frustration here and there, is 
It transfers frustration. It transfers aggression. The church is not your place for transferring frustration and aggression. We are willing to help you. If you have so much bitterness, so much frustration, and so much distraction in your life, and you don't know where to vent it, but in situations like this, we can help you. We want to let you know we love you, and Jesus loves you. It is well with you, and it is well with your loved ones. For the family of the diseased, we pray for strength and help, and for the body of Christ generally, it is well with you. In Jesus' precious name, this is Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche, Senior Pastor, Dunamis International Gospel Center. God bless you.